Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Once again here with a good friend of mine, dreaming English, a writer from United States, Massachusetts. And today uh, we want to talk about our culture, which is very, very, very interesting. Yeah, why not? Hello, good morning, Roger. How are you doing today? Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for asking. Oh, wow. I'm great, too. It's beautiful here. Look, I'm at the beach, and you're just, wow. You have so I'm, I'm, I'm right at the mountains right now. Oh, my God. Those beautiful, beautiful mountains. mountains. You know, here in the Dominican Republic, where I live, we have a lot of mountains. Oh, we have the biggest mountain from the whole Caribbean with 3,089 meter high. So it's nice oh. to be here with you and I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And today we want to talk, talk a little bit about our culture. So our nationality, food, music, language, and what a little bit about our economy. So that people know a little, just a little bit about us. So, but like we say in the whole world, lady first. So I would like to know okay. where you're coming from, your mix and the language you speak and how you decided to, to be a YouTuber. That would be great. Okay, yeah. So, so I am a few things. I am Finnish from my father's side. I am Italian, French, English, and Scottish. So a big, huge mix of different things. Wow. Um, I was actually, yeah, so a big mix, right? Um, and I was actually born in Colorado. So these aren't the mountains of Colorado behind me. These are actually New Hampshire, but I was born next to very tall mountains in Colorado, but my, I grew up most of my life in Massachusetts. So, and how did I get to be a YouTuber? Cause I have an 11 year old daughter that wanted to have a YouTube channel. And, um, now it's mostly me. She's not on it as much, but it was really her idea to do that. And you're doing that you? great. What? I really love it. Well, you yeah, know, thank you. Thank you. You're doing a great job. And I share with all my friends. So if you watch in this channel, if you want to improve your English um, to pick up a great American accent, uh, do not forget to watch Dreaming English with Roger. Well, I've been improving my English since I'm watching your channel. You know, I'm from Dominican Republic. English is not my native language. But when I want to improve, what I have to do is Watch your channel. Good. So me, I'm a tour guide uh, from Dominican Republic, and I learn a mix. I'm a mix for different nationality. You know, on this island we have Indians. Indian. They came from South America, Venezuela, and they came to this kind of island with little boats. Then Spanish people came here in 1492, and 60 years later. Uh, after the arrival, there were no more Indians. So the Spanish brought Africans to, to this island called Haiti was the name of this island. And, all, uh, and they, they named the island La Española. So Dominican people like me were a mix of half Spanish and we are half Africans. That's what we are. And then through the time came people from Italy, uh, from China, Nihao, Nihao Ma, came people from uh, Japan, Ohio Samas, with the Kushua, Valentines, with the Kushua Nipongo, Wakarimas, came people from Germany, hello, guten tag, Bigit Alex Sam, came people from Italy, ciao, buongiorno a tutti, came people from France, bonjour, moi je m'appelle Valentin, je parle français. So we are actually a mix more than 15 different nationalities. Our language, Spanish, and Spanish, and most of us, we are Catholic. But due to this mix, we have many, many beliefs. Yeah, many beliefs in the American Republic. And I decided to become a, a YouTuber after the COVID-19. So I work as a tour guide. I didn't have anything to do. And I say to myself, well, I speak English. I will open a YouTube channel. And then I decided like, you know, like, two months ago, that's it. So that's me. That's awesome. So here in the US, we have people from all over the world as well. And people started coming here, well, 
I think the earliest was the 1500s um, with with Jamestown, and then that's in um, Virginia. And then 1620 was the Pilgrims right here, in Massachusetts. They landed here, uh, but they were people coming from Europe even before that, where there were Vikings coming here and fishermen. And before the Pilgrims came, most of the Native Americans, as we call the Indians, we call them Native Americans here, most of them were wiped out from the fishermen that came and brought yellow fever. So very sadly, most of um, the Native Americans were wiped out and um, had more than like 90% of them had died. So it was much easier for the pilgrims to actually live here because all of the land was already cleared for farming by the Native Americans who unfortunately had passed. Um, and we have people from all over as well. I mean, everywhere. Um, all the countries here, as I'm sure everyone knows, the United States, um, people came from all over Europe and now all over the world. And unfortunately, the Native American population lost more than 90% of their population. Yeah, from I, I could say you're in a great, great country, because if you do analyze the history from many other countries, you have like 200 years history. And he started in Georgetown, I think. You know, like 200 years. Yes, Georgetown. Georgetown yeah, was like 15, I think it was 15, 14 was Georgetown. Yeah, I know. And, yeah. you know, if you think about what you have already done, like, you know, the first people who came to the moon and so many things, only in 200 years, you're great. You're great. You have done so many positive things for the whole world. So I'm really happy then talking to you and listening to you about your your culture, yeah. so great. So and you told me you're a mix on so many people. So you speak English, English? I speak English and I speak Spanish. My grandmother did speak Italian, but I only learned like Kabish from her. Kabish, Kabish, that was it. Kabish, Kabish. Like understand, like, and, and, and then she, because she married a Frenchman. Oh my God. She didn't really speak, she didn't speak um, Italian to her children. That was like, a lot of times when people come here, they decide that they're gonna not speak the languages of their, their former countries anymore because they want their children to speak English. And so it wasn't encouraged to have, a, a, not every time, but like a lot of people will come here and they'll be like, I don't want my children to speak the former language. They want their children to speak English. And it's sad because that was lost. Even my children's father is from Russia and he didn't teach his children Russian because he wanted to just forget all the past of living under the Soviet Union and he wanted his children to be American. So unfortunately they didn't learn Russian. Um, but I speak Spanish because I studied it and I chose to speak it as a hobby for work and whatnot. Uh, but the official language in the United States is English. And unfortunately, most of the people in the United States only speak English. Um, Speaking a second language isn't super encouraged here, unfortunately, as it is in other countries. So I think we have to open uh, a language school to teach people how to speak different language in the United States. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. the world is open. And how come did you, you decided to learn Spanish? What, what kind well, of I mean, growing up, when I was growing up, there's a lot of people from Puerto Rico all around me and they could speak two languages. And I just thought that was awesome that they could speak two languages and I wanted to learn another language. And when I finally got a chance to learn, there was only three choices. There was um, Spanish, French, or Latin. Well, no one really speaks Latin. Um, they still teach Latin, but they really only teach translation for Latin. Uh, so I decided on the Spanish because I thought it was more useful than French. Good. And Sounds good. that was my choice. Good, okay. Right? Look, I speak those languages, like six languages, and I'm trying to learn Russian now. I speak a little bit. You know, do you speak a little Russian too? Three words is da, niet, and placebo, which I think I'm saying uh, it wrong. W, Minya Sabut Valentin, Dominikanski Republic, Yagavariu Paruski, Oshin Harashota, Kaktila. Maybe we should start in another language together. Okay, good. So sure. now, we know our background, we know our country foundation. What about, what kind of food do you have? We know we have different food. I mean, like we have everything. My particular family is very influenced from my Italian grandmother and almost everything that I cook, 
will have some pasta in it. I make some Italian yonkies, which is an Italian type of pasta made from potato. Um, I will make meatballs, which a lot of the Italian food that she made was what, what was American Italian. It's not as common in Italy, but there was a big, um, when Italians came here in the United States, they kind of came up with different dishes that they don't serve as much in Italy. But I'm very influenced by, by Italian cooking, uh, but we have everything like, I guess the typical, typical American food would be like hamburgers and, and French fries. We make that, but not as often. Um, <laughs> Well, in the Dominican no. Republic, you know, we are a mix of uh, different nationality. Like, we, like I say, we have many influence from everywhere, but Dominican people, we love to eat rice, bean, and chicken. I've been eating rice, bean, and chicken for 49 years, and I'm still alive, so I'm supposed that's a great food. And we love to eat banana, too. The banana that came from the Canary Island, uh, during the second trip from Christopher Columbus. And that's why, you know, we got the banana power here. It's a very healthy food. And that's why we became the best baseball player in the world. So talking about the banana power, like Sammy Sosa, Pedro Martinez, and those famous baseball playing state, then that's the kind of food, uh, the kind of food we have. Uh, with this. And what kind of music do you like to listen to? So we like, what kind of music do you like? So the, like you have a, some kind of music? I mean, I personally like a lot of the pop music from the eighties. Like it could be um, Madonna and Lionel Richie. And I'm trying to think um, Elton Leonard John, Richie. all of this. Yeah, all of this. Oh my God, we love, yeah. we love this music. You know, when we learn, yeah. English in the Dominican Republic, when we go to school, they teach us with this classic music from the 80s. I've been alone with you inside my mind, and in my dreams I kiss your lips a thousand times. That's the way we learn English. Yeah. We're richer. You know, we love um, uh, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton, mm -hmm. when we go to the karaoke, we love to sing Eric Clapton music, and we love uh, Willie Nelson, you are always on my mind. We love oh, yes. guy Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson. We love them. But in the Dominican yeah. Republic, we have merengue. We love merengue and bachata. That's the kind of music, the kind of music we dance and we love it. Yeah. Are you there? Yes, that's the, the kind of music. Uh, we like. Oh, you got frozen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I, I was frozen. It I think. I think it. Um, if you want to continue for where you were talking about Eric Clapton or something, that's probably where you got frozen. Yes. Good. So I mean that uh, we love Eric Clapton music, Frank Sinatra. Uh, oh, you know who I love. I love this guy. His song, You Are So Beautiful to Me, Joe Coke. And oh, yeah. And other things uh, like Air Supply, we love them. And this guy, I remember his name now. He sings uh, Barry White, we love him. But in the Dominican Republic, yeah. we have bachata, merengue, and salsa. That's what people love. You know, a lot of American people, they come here on vacation, and when they listen to this music, Dominican Republic, they get crazy about it. So I hope you come someday to this. Place. Yeah, absolutely. I have um, some friends that are from, well, I have at least like one or two friends from Dominican Republic. Um, so yeah, we, we have similar, I think similar music, but also when we get back to circling back to the food, we do have a lot of the different foods, like the, the, the rice and beans, like, cause we have people from all over the different like Ecuador and Panama and all that. So we have a lot of restaurants that if you want to have a empanada from um, El Salvador or whatnot, you can go to that restaurant and get that kind of food. Um, so more so like in the bigger cities, not here where I live, but in Worcester where I, where I work, there are places that you can buy all kinds of food. A lot of foods from, from um, Africa too. There are restaurants that sell those kind of foods. Um, and yeah, then the music, I think, 
Okay, keep mm -hmm. on, keep on. Now music, I, you know, I think we like all kinds of different kinds of music. Um, I think it's, did, people have varied tastes. Like I guess I like the music I grew up with, which is the music from the eighties, but. Me too, me too, good, that sounds nice. So um, what, what do you do there in the United States, here in the Dominican Republic? You know, it's a beautiful country with beautiful beaches. We have like 500 kilometers beautiful beaches. So we got tourists coming from all over the world. They love it. They, when they come to this place, they fall in love. We have more than 40,000 K beautiful beaches, islands. Uh, we have beautiful islands extra belonging to, to this island. This island where we are, Hispaniola Island is 77,000 square kilometers. We have like 70% mountains. We have a little cave. We have more than 9,000 different uh, kind of trees. And you see the palm tree, that's the coconut tree coming from Africa. African people brought this palm tree right here and they live 100 years and they have more than 250 coconuts. And we made with this coco loco. So we put rum in it, coco loco, and when the people drink it here, they become very happy in the Dominican Republic. That's, that's a little bit about this beautiful yeah. island. We have a temperature 24, uh, sorry, 26 degrees all year long. So that's is a paradise right here, Rich. Yeah, so here, like, it's a big country, but I'll, I'll talk about Massachusetts and um, behind me is New Hampshire. Um, because like we have all kinds of things all over the country and I'm not a total expert of everything but here we have beaches too and our water is very cold oh my god I well, thank it. you <laughs> so I go to the beach I actually go to, to camping at the beach and I it's um in New Hampshire no where I go camping is actually Massachusetts um, and I camp by the beach but the water is very very cold I don't know I would say that it's probably 16 degrees Celsius or maybe a little bit higher. Um, I'm guessing on that, but I know that it's um, it's pretty darn cold, but I swim in it. I do swim in it. Of course, um, it. Yes, because it, it takes a long time to get used to it because you first put in your toe and your toe starts freezing and it gets numb. Then you put in your ankle and so on. Pretty soon your whole body is numb and you don't care anymore and you're swimming. Um, so I do go swimming in it. We have beautiful beaches, obviously no coconut trees. We have sand dunes and um, things like that. And uh, I don't know how many miles of beach that we have, but a lot. Of for course, sure. and we're gonna know that in our next program. We're going to keep on talking. Right, exactly. Um, I, I can say that behind me are the White Mountains where Actually, um, one of these mountains behind me is the tallest mountain in the Northeast, which is Mount Washington, which gets the most, um, like the most extreme weather anywhere besides Antarctica. It has like, I went up there in the summertime and pretty much you almost can't stand. Like you could like be standing and you could just be, the wind is just blowing you because oh it's God. such crazy weather there. Um, so it's the tallest mountain in the Northeast right there. Um, one of those mountains behind me. And we have, so we have the mountains in New England, but not as, not the tallest. The tallest mountains would be the Rocky Mountains, which go through all the way from Canada and then go all the way down through South America. And I was born next to one of those tall mountains in Colorado. Um, those mountains, I think, get up to like 10,000 and 15,000 feet. The ones behind me, I think that they are like six or 8,000 feet tall. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I don't remember exactly. I think you know more of it because you're a tour guide, so I don't have all the memorization oh, of um, everything like that. We'll do this next time. So, and what do you do for fun? Uh, so, what do I what do I do for fun? I do love to go camping and hiking. When we don't have coronavirus, I like to go to the theater and see live shows, um, live musicals, and stuff like that. Um, and I like to go to museums, things like that. So, I, I like to do outdoor stuff. Um, going out to see the mountains and the waterfalls and that kind of stuff. What about you? Well, me too. You know, I love traveling, like visiting uh, different places, talking to different people, learning about the culture, enjoy it every day. I think every day is a fresh start and it's a beautiful day. I try to surround myself with positive thoughts because I say all the time, 
life is a, a, as a big restaurant and you choose what you want to eat. So I don't listen to the bad news, bad uh, things. I don't want to see that. I don't talk about anything bad. If I see something bad, I try to repair it. Like if I'm walking on the street and I see a piece of trash on the sidewalk, I just take it with me and I put it in a big place. That's the way I see the world. So good people. I hope you enjoyed this very nice program we're doing. I think we're gonna have another one, right? Talking about Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we still have other things to talk about. Yeah, we have something to talk about all the time. So what do you recommend people now? My last question, if they have to do if they want to improve their English. What do you think we they should do if they want to improve their English? Like to learn I mean, better English. Yeah, I mean I I'm a big proponent of trying to immerse yourself and listen to as much as you can and watch. I like to watch YouTube with the subtitles on and be able to read along. Um, so that way the, the language becomes more natural and you develop the ear for the language. Um, I, that's my, my, the way that I learned. I think everyone has their own different ways that they learn better. Like some people will learn better by kind of going through the grammar and really kind of doing the book stuff. But for me, I learned better by listening and watching. Um, I think it's a, I'm an audio visual type of person. Um, and what about you? What do you think are the best ways? Well, I think the best way to learn English is to watch Dreaming English with Roger and English Valentine English. So people, I Absolutely. hope you like uh, this program. I think that was a great, a great so interview and we're going to have more for you. Remember, you listen to all the subtitles, you listen and you repeat and you will learn about two different culture, one from the United States and one from the Dominican Republic. If you like this video, do not forget to push the red button, right? The like button to share with yep. your friend and subscribe. Thank you very much. You have some final words to say? Yeah, thanks for watching. And like, like Valentin said, share this with other people that you know that are trying to learn another language because we really want to help more people. Of course, we will. So. See you next time and wow, wow, wow. And do not forget, life is a beautiful thing as long as you hold the strength. But before, one moment, one more time, one more question. You, you are doing a lot of phrases in the last video you're doing, right? Like phrases? Last uh, phrases, yes. Do you have a last one for your followers now? And then we finish? Oh, well, yeah, my latest video, I actually made about the game Lotteria. Do you play that there? Uh, yeah, of course. I, I want to watch. Yeah, I'm going to watch it right now. Okay, people. Yeah. So that's it. Watch it. I will watch it right now to improve my English fluency. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.